Hey everyone, thanks for joining us at our second episode of the Bees Knees podcast. Today we're talking about freaking millennials. We like talking about a whole lot of topics. Join us if you please, cause we're the Bees Knees, oh yeah. So a couple weeks ago, a TikTok user, Maya Leppa, posted a TikTok about she's expressing that she doesn't like when boomers lump millennials and Gen Z's together because she doesn't want to be associated with people who view Harry Potter as personality trait. So Harry Potter has been a huge part of my life, but not in the way that you would expect. Like, I was not a fan, so to speak, of Harry Potter. Like, I enjoyed the movies, but I wasn't a diehard fan. I wasn't obsessed with it. No, I wasn't either. Like, the first time I watched all of the movies was within the last year. Yeah, and I think that's the same with me. Because I could never keep track of what movie was what. The first Harry Potter was released in the 90s, the late 90s. I think maybe 97 that it was published. And then the movie didn't come out until 2001. So I would have been in, like, grade 3. And in between grade three and grade six it just was a huge deal yeah and just in the reactions of my friends and my classmates and how they were so obsessed with it it was the greatest thing that had ever happened to their lives that affected me in the sense that I was like I should be liking this but as far as I'm concerned it's just okay yeah yeah and it kind of filled that gap like there was there wasn't really any large pop culture icon or phenomenon that we had until that yeah and it's funny because I remember like when you're in grade three and so on you're starting to really actually be able to read decent sized chapter books Mm -hmm. and so I remember shortly after grade three maybe four or five all my friends were reading Harry Potter And I tried to read Harry Potter several times because I was like, oh, all the cool kids are doing it. So I have to be doing it kind of thing. And it's because I wasn't included in that. Like I had seen the movies, but they were all reading the books, all talking about, oh, like this happened in this chapter. And that was something that I wasn't a part of. So I had tried several times to read the book and to get included. And I just I couldn't get into it. Yeah, I also was never included in anything like that. One, because my friend group didn't care about any of that stuff. Like, we were all just like the basement kids that just stayed inside all the time. And like, when other people tried to talk to us, we would just run away. Yeah. Well, and you're older than me, too. That's true. So it could have had a different impact. Because when you're a kid, the age makes a big difference. A couple years makes a big difference when you're young. Yeah. But on top of like, just my... I don't know if it was my age or whatever, but I just struggle reading books because I, my attention span. Mm -hmm. So I just could never sit down. I would end up rereading one line over and over and over Mm -hmm. and five minutes would pass and I'd be like, oh, I just read the same thing 20 times. Yeah. And I would read a chapter and I would know what was going on. I was following along, but I had no commitment to it I didn't have there was nothing bringing me back and so a few weeks would go past and I would be like oh yeah I'm reading that book like I have to read this book because you know I want to I want to like this because everybody else likes it and I would pick it up and then I would be like I don't remember what happened so then I would do the same thing where I had to go back and kind of skim through the chapter to catch myself up and be like oh right yeah yeah yeah, this happened and then do that again and every single chapter that went by the same thing happened when I would stop. I would just completely forget about it. And I am a reader. I enjoy reading. So that was really strange to me that I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. And I just assumed, well, I must be stupid. <laughs> like, I'm just an idiot because I cannot get on the same level as my classmates. <laughs> and it's funny that the thing that we both struggled to get into was something that just all of our generation still is obsessed with. Yeah, it's uh, it's iconic for us, for like the millennials. Yeah. Yeah, and now we're getting into the community of it because like you said, even still now that we're reaching 30, 
there are still so many people who are so obsessed with it. Yeah. And you think about the community of Harry Potter. What what do they call themselves? Are they Potterheads or something? There's something, there's, right? There's something. <laughs> and they are still like they have themselves categorized into their into their houses and it is still such a huge bonding moment for them. Like I feel like Harry Potter fans have it so easy in the sense that they can go to a party or something where they might know little to no one. Mm-hmm. And they have Harry Potter to fall back on. They can just go <laughs> up to somebody and be like, yeah, like this is me. And yeah, I'm a Hufflepuff. <laughs> and it's just like they this can like, bond. Oh, over. y'all, you're a Hufflepuff? So Yo, am I. Yeah, me too. Let's let's hang out. <laughs> and like you hear so many times that that there are like Hufflepuffs and Ravenclaws existing out there. Very few times do I see on the internet or hear about the Slytherins or the Gryffindors. I feel like I see a lot of Gryffindors. And I, I don't know what that is. It's like some sort of weird hybrid house. Yeah, but to be fair, you don't know what any of them mean. No, I don't. I don't know what any of them are. But then there's like people like us who aren't as into Harry Potter and don't know all the ins and outs and stuff, all the facts and everything that went into Harry Potter, both mm-hmm. books and movies. Yep. And like, if we go to a party and we know almost nobody, we have to rely solely on our personality. <laughs> like, <laughs> And for some of us, that's really hard to do. It's intimidating as heck. Yeah, because what are we supposed to talk about? We don't know Harry Potter. Yeah, we're outcasts. And one time I remember I tried to fit in with some Harry Potter people. But this was after I had already ditched the whole I'm going to read the books and try and get in legitimately. Now I'm just like, oh, I'm going to fake it till I make it. So (laughs) That always works so well. Yeah. So I remember knowing that Dumbledore had died. Okay. And I remember overhearing a group of people talking about Harry Potter and they were reading the books. And me not knowing anything about what order the books are in or what order of events things happen in. I just think like, oh, I know this information. I'm going to go and like get myself included in this conversation. I can participate for once. So I go over and I'm like kind of just listening to them talk about Harry Potter. And then at some point I find it necessary to jump in and be like, oh yeah, like I was so devastated when Dumbledore died. And I guess they hadn't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> and the movie was out. And that's the reason I knew that Dumbledore okay. had died. Because I had heard it from another group of people that okay. I was eavesdropping on. But they, I guess, were reading the book first. And they hadn't watched the movie or done anything. They wanted to read the book and then watch the movie. Okay. And so I don't know where they were in the book. But they definitely weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> and they were so mad. And I think that was the last time I was like, okay, nope. Harry Potter's just not for me. I can't do it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, those poor people. They were just they were just reading the book so they could get the whole story. Yep. And go and enjoy this thing that they like. And some just random <laughs> yeah, I comes up I... and is just like, Oh hey, by the way, that's like going to the theater in nineteen eighty, just walking in, strutting your stuff and be like, Man, I was so devastated when I found out that Darth Vader is Luke's father. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm that person. Like, that's not a small thing for them. No. I'm surprised you didn't get hit, to be honest. Yeah, me too. I'm surprised. I'm still alive today, and that's a miracle. (laughs) Honestly, there's so many millennials that are just crazy about Harry Potter. So going back to the original video we were talking about by Maya Leppa, there was a lot of other Gen Zers in the comments who really doubled down on this I guess, millennial roasting. Mm -hmm. Um, And like one of them that was just like first on the list was like, oh, don't worry, millennial. I'll get you an avo toast. That's bae, right? Which is like two things. One, avocado toast is just avocado toast. Yeah. But there was a whole industry built on it just because of millennials. Like you would go downtown and buy an avocado toast and it'd be $10 Mm -hmm. just because it was like a thing that millennials liked yeah that was also like the rise of the hipsters yeah 
man, millennials have really just kind of made a lot of impactful things. Um, but the second part of it was like, that's Bay, right? Speaking of impactful things, millennials do, they just make words like I'm to this day, not entirely sure what Bay ever meant, whether it was just like a, a bastardized babe or mm-hmm. if it was like I read somewhere it was like before anything else or something like that. Mm-hmm. But like it doesn't make sense in the context. It's just it's dumb. Yeah, but I use it. <laughs> I've used it too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just. It doesn't stop us from captioning our, our Instagram pictures. Bay hard eye emoji. Yeah. Or like I think I named people in my contacts that Bay, yeah, and totally. It was just a friend. Like it wasn't anything like it wasn't anyone before anyone else. Yeah. Well it they was better just not like, be. <laughs> <laughs> like it was just like a friend I talk to once a month. Oh, they're Bay. They're Bay. <laughs> hey Bay. Um then there was another one in that comment list that was like, uh just wait until they talk about this on their podcast, which first hey now. Yep. L- like, we will talk about whatever we want on our podcast. Yeah. We're just having fun. This is our baby, and we're going to do what we want, and we're going to have fun with it, and there's nothing you could say about it. Like, don't hate us because we're millennials. But you can hate us because we're millennials. It's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so then they go on to make fun of us further and how much time we spend on BuzzFeed. And they say something along the lines of, like, don't worry, they won't see this. They're too busy on BuzzFeed reading articles about why the 90s were better. Which, one, they were. (laughs) And two, can we just think about how ironic it is? Because we found this by being on a BuzzFeed article. You were on Facebook and you saw this Gen Z's roasting millennials article from BuzzFeed. Yep. And, like, they're making fun of you for that. Yeah, and I thought it was funny. It's it's very accurate. Yeah, well, and let's be, I'd spend too much time on BuzzFeed. They come up with just, like, so much entertaining things, and sometimes it's not even really that entertaining, but you just gotta know. It's clickbait. Like, they post things, and they have captions that make you want to read it, and then one thing leads to another, because then once you get through one article, it's got things like, oh, you might also like this, and then I think, yeah, you know what? I think I might like that, and I click on it, and then next thing you know, three hours has gone by, and I'm like, oh, crap. I haven't done anything. <laughs> but now you know what type of pasta you are. It's very important to know. Like, that's something that I can't continue life knowing what type of pasta <laughs> I am, but... I don't actually know now, so I'm going to have to go through BuzzFeed and start looking for this quiz that tells me what type of pasta I am. Thanks, Gen Zs, for reminding us how much we love BuzzFeed. Yeah. And just speaking of pasta some more, pasta, pizza, wine. Those are some things that they also call us out for liking too much, Mm -hmm. especially the wine. Yeah, it seems like millennials will just like every time they do something, they add wine. It's like, oh, hey, I just worked out. Time for wine. Or like the Gen Zs will make fun of us because we'll be on TikTok doing the dances with our fifth glass of wine in hand. Yeah. And they're just like, okay, calm down. You're 32 and your liver is failing. Like this isn't something to be bragging about. (laughs) It's alcoholism. (laughs) Exactly. Or like they'll, we'll do something. It'll be something really just an everyday task. And then of course we've got to say, I just did a thing and it'll be like, we just made dinner and we've got our wine and that's how you know that it's been a good day. And I think that we have just claimed, like latched ourselves onto wine as a generation because that's the adult drink. We've passed the point of Jaeger bombs and taking shots. Now we're having our adult drink. Hashtag adulting. Yeah, but remember, we're millennials, so we can't afford good wine. No, no, we've got our our boxed cheap wine so that we can afford to be on our fifth glass. (laughs) Yeah. But like, so someone on Twitter pointed out that we will buy a basic necessity and we'll caption it that we're treating ourselves. And it's just because like we go so far as to prioritize wine that like, when we're buying a necessity, it's viewed as a treat because our priorities are just mixed up. So basically, as a millennial, we like to say that we're adulting, 
but we have no idea how to actually act like a responsible adult. <laughs> Not a freaking clue. Okay, this one, I have to side on the Gen Zs with this because I have so many people on my social media that do this and I've never understood it. It's from Twitter user Michael Daw. Millennials love to ask for a recommendation and end it with and go. Like everyone is lined up in a race to Google something for them. Hashtag millennials. Why? Like why say the and go? I don't get it. Yeah, me neither. Because the biggest thing about it is it's like they're sitting there expecting everybody to just have nothing better to do than to look something up for them. And it's just, it's skirting the line between I genuinely want a recommendation and the, I want to know this, but I am either too lazy or just unaware of how to look something up for myself Yeah, and go. Yeah. Like if you want to know someone's personal experience on something and you genuinely want to know that and you're using Facebook or some other social media platform to find this out. Why do you have to end it with and go? It's so presumptuous and kind of narcissistic yes. to think that people are just sitting there waiting for you to ask a question. Yeah, it's like despite how much we make fun of boomers for just their entitlement, we have completely just adapted it and transitioned it into our own quirkiness. Yeah, I think it was definitely intended to be quirky and cute. But it's not. And I I completely side with the Gen Zs on this. You, like, just Google it. Just Google it. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up with the and go. All right. Here's one I found, and I'm going to read for reasons. Um, Millennials love spending lots of money on trinkets to put on the top of their Ikea furniture. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a jab at me. This is a personal attack on my personality and my love for trinkets. You have such a love for trinkets. Like every time we go out shopping, I have to make sure that you don't go into the home decor section or else we'll come home with a couple new planters, like a decorative bird cage, and just like a variety of other things. Yeah, because they're nice, and I could use them at some point. We have bookshelves that don't hold books. They hold things. Very nicely decorated and displayed. I like to display the stuff in our home. It makes it look welcoming and inviting and homey, and I like it. Such a millennial. Friggin' millennials. So sue me. I like my trinkets, and I'll stand by it. Okay, so we have the Gen Zs roasting us millennials, which is fine it's so funny because it's true but i've also seen some posts online about gen z's and i'm pretty sure they're also by gen z's so this one's from user tan gen z will drink one medium caramel latte not eat a single thing till 4 p.m verbally abuse a racist crack a joke about their mental health and pick up a tear gas canister with their bare hands but get nervous when they have to call to make a doctor's appointment yeah but i mean we also get nervous to call the doctors. Yeah, like I, it took me the longest time to be comfortable on the phone and to make a doctor's appointment, hair appointment, any kind of appointment. And I remember this really embarrassing thing to me at the time anyway. Now it's just a funny story. But I was, I needed to make a hair appointment and I was on the phone and I had rehearsed beforehand. Okay, this is what you're going to say. Don't mess it up. You know exactly what you're going to say. You're going to be fine. Just just get on the phone and say it. So I pick up the phone. I call my hairdresser. She answers and says, like, this is whatever salon. And I go, hi, Brittany. This is Nancy. No, wait. You're Nancy. I'm Brittany. Can I just make a hair appointment? <laughs> I remember it, and it was incredibly hilarious. Yeah, it was humiliating, and it made me never want to make a phone call again. <laughs> but look at you now. Yeah, I'll make appointments all damn day. I know my name now. <laughs> hey, at least we know that anxiety around phone calls isn't just a millennial thing. It's a Gen Z thing too. Yeah, because like there was a, a tweet that like Gen Zs will overthrow the government, but they're too afraid to tell the waiter that their food was wrong. Yeah, pretty much Gen Zs are like fearless when you need to be fearless. But in everyday situations, they're just anxiety ridden yeah 
it's actually kind of shocking the things they choose to do and not be afraid of. This is the generation that threatened to storm Area 51 because the government couldn't kill them all. They ate Tide Pods for fun as an internet joke. Yeah. They're alarmingly good at getting their voices heard. Yeah, and it's like when this whole millennial roast happened, there were so many millennials that got really offended being called out on this stuff. And um, it's funny because like this stuff is very small things. It doesn't really matter. Like, you, yeah, you like Harry Potter, maybe a little too much, but you're not hurting anybody. We say adulting. We're not hurting anybody. But we millennials got so offended over it. And I think it's because the Gen Zs have this gift of calling people out on little stuff and big stuff. They're just better at demanding change. Yeah. And as far as them calling us out on things that we do as millennials, I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny and refreshing just to see their different viewpoint on our generation and things that we do and things that we like. I thought it was funny. Yeah. If you have any good stories about millennials, Gen Zs, whatever generation, send them on into us. You can send them to Twitter at the Bees Knees Cast, Instagram, and YouTube at the Bees Knees Podcast. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of the Bees Knees Podcast. We'll talk with you next week. Mm-hmm.